In today's video, we're going to be talking about single sideband and AM RF envelopes and the power measurements and considerations for these various signals. The RF envelope can be defined as traces that follow the extremes of the RF signal. Let's take a closer look. Here's an example of looking at a modulated RF signal. The dark traces above and below here represent the RF envelope, and if we zoom in anywhere within here and zoom in very far, we'd actually be able to expand it out and actually see the RF signal itself. Now in most cases, the envelope of the signal is related to the audio or baseband signal that's being uh, modulated onto the RF signal itself. And the largest excursion, the largest magnitude of that envelope, the largest magnitude that the RF uh, voltage goes to, is called the peak of the envelope. The reason we want to talk about the peak of the envelope is because the power measurement for a single sideband signal is often defined by its peak envelope power. But before we talk about that, let's kind of define what we mean by RF power. So here's our zoomed in view of that RF signal. We can look at things such as peak to peak voltage or half of that being the peak voltage. But when talking about power, we've got to talk about RMS voltage. The RMS voltages can be computed quite simply over you know, even just a single cycle by looking at the peak voltage divided by square root of 2, which is the same thing as saying peak voltage times 0 0.7071. In the majority of RF applications, we're talking about a 50 ohm impedance uh, for transmission lines and antennas and loads and things like that. So when we talk about computing power, we'll do it into a 50 ohm load. So power is simply computed by taking the RMS voltage squared divided by 50 ohms. So when we talk about doing a peak envelope power calculation, we take a look at the peak excursion of the envelope, use the voltage that's occurring at that peak, and then compute power in this way. So the peak envelope power is computed from the peak voltage converted to RMS at the peak of the excursion of the RF signal. So in the case of this single sideband uh, RF envelope, we can see that the peak excursion is really not going past about uh, four divisions on the scope. And at 50 volts per division, we're talking about 200 volts peak to peak, which corresponds to about 100 watts uh, PEP, or peak envelope power. Now before going off and making some measurements on the scope and with an RF power meter, let's quickly review a couple of uh, RF envelopes for single sideband and AM. Starting off with uh, AM, uh, without any audio input, and you just uh, key up the mic, you essentially get an RF carrier. And then as you modulate, the amplitude of that carrier is varied up and down, hence the name amplitude modulation. And you can see that uh, the ideal amplitude for the carrier would be half of the achievable peak-to-peak -peak, uh, voltage. Uh, because as, this volt, as the voltage goes up on one side, it's going to come down on the other, and you don't want to go collapse to nothing because that would create distortion. So for 100% modulation, where you collapse just down to zero and then back again, uh, then you, you essentially go double the original amplitude and then down to nothing. So the ideal uh, AM carrier magnitude is one half the voltage that occurs at peak to peak, which means it's one quarter the power that occurs at the peak envelope power. So for a 100 watt transmitter, the ideal carrier amplitude would be 25 watts. For a 1500 watt uh, AM signal, the ideal carrier would be 375 watts. If a single tone is applied to an amplitude modulated transmitter, you're essentially going to get an RF envelope that looks like this. The upper and lower envelopes are essentially inverses of each other that follow the amplitude of the baseband or audio signal. Let's compare this to single sideband. Single sideband eliminates the carrier and one of the sidebands from the RF signal. So with no audio input, there is no output. That's just a property of single sideband. If we put in that same single tone that we did in the AM case here, on single sideband, that's going to look like a constant amplitude, constant frequency RF envelope. So certainly a single tone going into a single sideband transmitter could be used to measure essentially the peak envelope power directly with an RF power meter. Uh, however, in many cases, or I should say in some cases, uh, a single sideband transmitter may not be rated to pull up, put out its full peak envelope power in a contiguous fashion. So oftentimes uh, a two-tone measurement is used. If two audio tones are applied to a single sideband transmitter, and those tones are adjusted to create the same amount of 
RF excursion or the same amplitude, the resulting uh, envelope will look very much like this. Now oftentimes people will confuse this two-tone single sideband envelope with a single tone AM envelope, but they actually are, are different for an important reason. If you take a look at the, the shape of this, uh, the upper and lower envelopes are both sinusoidal shapes, mirror images of each other. In the case of the single sideband signal, these upper and lower envelopes are still mirrors of each other, but they're essentially half signs. So in some, in some sense, the sine wave is composed of this upper envelope and the lower one going down like that, and vice versa. So there are, they are very different, and therefore the average power measured uh, with both of these is going to be different. Now one interesting property of the two-tone single sideband modulated signal is that if you measure the power with a typical average responding watt meter like a bird watt meter, the average power reading will actually be equal to half of the peak envelope power. Just an interesting property and a nice way to be able to measure the peak to peak envelope power uh, of a single sideband transmitter without going to full 100% duty cycle. Now the two-tone signal applied to an AM transmitter will create an RF envelope that uh, essentially is the, the sum of those two tones. And the shape of that will vary depending on what two tones are picked and things like that. This is uh, generally not used for measuring any kind of power measurements, but is often used to look at modulator linearity because you can take and demodulate this signal and look at the spectral properties of that to see if there are any uh, third order products that are generated due to nonlinearities in the transmitter. So let's go take a look at uh, some of these envelopes on the scope and how they relate to power measurements made with an RF power meter. We're making the measurements today on an ICOM IC706, which is a 100 watt uh, HF rig. We'll just be making the measurements in the 40 meter band at 7.150 uh, megahertz. In order to inject our test tones into the microphone input, I simply built a little fixture that has a PTT or power to, uh, press to talk switch and an audio input that interfaces the audio signal from my signal generator back here uh, into the mic audio input of the radio. I've got the radio output going through the bird watt meter, which is going to read average power. So it's not going to follow the peaks of the envelope, but it's going to tend to average all of that out. And we'll talk a bit more about that shortly. And then the output of that is going out this coax to a dummy load that's mounted underneath my bench. And then I've got a probe adapter plug in back here that allows me to plug in a scope probe. And that's the voltage that's going to the scope. So we can actually measure voltages on that RF signal. I've got my signal generator here set to give me a one kilohertz single tone into the microphone input of the radio. And if we key the radio up, we can see a constant amplitude RF envelope like we'd expect to see. Uh, and uh, we look at the meter, we're looking at about 90 watts of peak envelope power. And zooming in on the envelope on the scope, we can actually see that the peak to peak excursion of that envelope is not quite 200 volts peak to peak. Again, we're 50 volts a division. We're just shy of four divisions high. And that uh, corresponds with uh, being just shy of 100 watts. Again, running about 90 watts according to the RF power meter. Now with the generator set for my two-tone input, I key the microphone, I can actually see the expected two-tone uh, single sideband RF envelope and the RF power as expected is now reading half of what we were seeing before. We were seeing about 90 watts, now we're seeing about 45 watts. I've uh, frozen the acquisition here so that uh, we can zoom in and uh, take a close look at what I said earlier that the envelope is really just following the excursion of the RF signal. So zoomed way in here I can actually see that RF signal. As I walk my way through the signal we can actually see how the amplitude of that signal is varying. Uh, and creating the RF envelope pattern that we were looking at there earlier. I was shown in the diagram earlier, uh, the stronger the baseband signal, the stronger the peak-to-peak -peak envelope power is for a single sideband signal. We can illustrate that by keying up with our two-tone pattern here. And if I adjust the mic gain down, reducing the audio input to the radio, we're reducing the peak-to-peak -peak envelope as seen on the scope. Let's look at the same thing with AM. Now for AM, without any audio input, and we key it up, we essentially get our uh, RF envelope of the carrier, which is ideally half the amplitude, as we mentioned, or one quarter of the power of the full peak-to-peak -peak envelope. And as we increase the baseband or audio input, we can see the envelope is adjusted both up and down uh, in response to that single tone. 
and the stronger the, that tone is, the more excursion we have. And 100% modulation would be the point where the troughs just touch each other and just barely extinguish the RF output power. And in that case, the uh, peak power should essentially be four times or twice the voltage amplitude of the carrier by itself. Now for other modulation modes such as CW or FM, the RF envelope when keyed up is very similar to the single tone envelope that we get uh, in the single sideband. And the peak envelope power or the maximum output power of the transmitter can easily be measured with a simple average reading watt meter like this BIRD 43. Now as we observed, if the envelope is not continuous and constant such as in the two tone, uh, we see that the output power measured on the BIRD 43 is not going to be equal to the peak envelope power. In the case of two-tone, it's exactly half the power. In the case of a 100% modulated AM signal, it's going to show less than half the power because the, the shape of that RF envelope is different. Now for an audio modulated signal, like driving it with uh, just your voice, you're going to read even less power. Let's take a look at how much less. And so I plug the microphone back into the radio here and speaking into the microphone in single sideband mode and we can see that my peak envelope power is still uh, close to that uh, you know, 200 volts peak to peak or uh, 100 watts peak envelope power that we were measuring earlier with the test patterns but if we look at the average reading uh, RF watt meter I'm lucky if I see any excursions that are above about 10 or 15 watts if I do more constant tones like that, or, or a whistle or something in the microphone, I might cause a larger excursion on the meter, but it would be very tough for me to actually see anything close to that uh, 100 watts. And this is because the amount of time that uh, the RF envelope reaches that extreme is only during your voice peaks, which are a very, very small percentage of the audio that you're transmitting. So that's why the average reading watt meter isn't going to show anything near the peak envelope power. This is perfectly normal, but it uh, causes a lot of folks some grief sometimes because they think that their radio is not pulling out full power. Now if you engage something like a speech compressor like I just did here, you can see that the uh, average power that uh, we're going to see on the meter is going to go up, but again, I'm not getting much more than you know, uh, 10 to 20 watts of uh, observable power here on the power meter, even though I can tell from the scope I'm definitely reaching that uh, 100 watts peak envelope power. Now this meter has got a uh, peak responding circuit in it, and if I engage that, now I can actually see that I actually am achieving that full 100 watts peak envelope power, because the peak detector in here is actually being able to follow uh, the peak excursions of the RF envelope and be able to respond appropriately. So if you don't have a peak responding watt meter, uh, don't be alarmed that your single sideband signal, uh, when you're looking at it, is only you know, maybe is you know, less than 20% of your peak envelope power you are likely still getting your full 100 watts PEP out of the rig. I hope you enjoyed this look at RF envelopes in various modes of a uh, ham radio transmitter and understand a bit more about what your average reading RF power meter will show you under various conditions. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so and pass uh, the information off to, off to your friends if you find it interesting. Thanks again as always for watching. And we'll see you next time.